Hey, uh, ooh, why am I so, there we go, here we are. <clears throat> anyway, so I wanted to, so I'm taking a policy class and we actually talked about welfare and what that means um, and kind of these right-wing contradictions within the idea of wealth, of welfare systems. Um, and so there are some interesting like left wing or leftist uh, issues with welfare. And, and maybe that's another video or maybe that's this video. Who knows? The videos just started. But what I wanted to talk about was these kind of contradictions. So one of the pieces we read, and I'm not going to give this man any credence. I'm not going to. If you if you read his work, you know what I mean. And he talks about um, the issues that, for instance, welfare has not solved issues related to poverty because, you know, it just if you're in poverty, they give you, you know, you're given a certain amount of money, but it doesn't solve um, the issue of poverty itself. And so in his kind of argument, he's saying that there shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be welfare or sh welfare should be severely limited because it's not solving the underlying problem. And he's right, it's not solving the underlying problem. The problem is capitalism. And the underlying, that's the underlying problem. And the problem is that welfare is only, especially in this country, let me just bring it around to this particular country, the one that we are currently in, which are the one that I'm currently in, in the United States. This particular country is not in, 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 truly investigated and in, are truly invested in solving issues related to poverty. They just want to keep enough people from dying in the streets, right? So every year, homeless people die in the streets because they cannot, um, they cannot get housing. Right. And it's not necessarily just an affordability issue. It's an availability issue and this notion of false scarcity. So false scarcity is when things really aren't scarce and there's this kind of false notion created around it. Um, overpopulation is one of those issues where they say, well, we don't make enough. You know, there's not enough food. There's not enough space. And that's a lie. There's both enough food and enough space to feed everyone. But there's a lot of money in keeping people poor. There's a lot of money in keeping people hungry. So there's a lot of money in giving people inadequate nutrition. So back to the housing thing, there is space to house people. It's just that because of the way the system we live in works, people are not being housed, right? So that you can artificially raise prices in places because, well, if everyone's being housed, if there's twice as much space as there are spaces, homes or rooms and our apartments as there are people who need them, well then, you know, now your supply is, your demand is going to be so low that in terms of supply, you'll have more supply than you, you know, you have and your prices will go down, right? Or the market will, because of the way the market works, right? They'll say, oh, well, there's no need to have prices as high, which is true. For me, I don't understand why rent's so goddamn high everywhere. Um, but I digress. Um, so the idea of false scarcity, um, the idea that, um, you know, oh, if we give everybody, or if we give these things to people, um, they won't have incentives either. That's weird too to me, like in terms of homelessness, like, well, if we just gave you a home, what is your incentive to stay in a home? I don't want to die in the streets. It's a really big incentive for a lot of people, but um, back to the back to the kind of right wing notion. So the thing is that it's not like welfare is not the solution because that's that's the band aid on the larger problem. And the larger problem is that people who work are not making enough to sustain themselves and their family. And that is also because the choices that they have are mitigated by their race, class, gender, ability, and those who are discriminated against them and not allowing them to have the full employable or educational opportunities that would give them a life where they would not need welfare, they're not being persecuted to the highest or to the fullest extent of the law. Those people who are affected are. So for instance, if I cannot get a job because I'm black, right? And people say, well, you, you know, because certain discriminations are really hard to prove. Some are easier, some are more difficult. So if I cannot afford to do that, right? And now I live on welfare, right? Now I'm on, you know, benefits. I need some kind of benefit system so that I can survive, right? Because I couldn't get the job that I should have gotten because I had the experience, I had the education, I have all the credentialing but I don't have the right name or the right look or fit. That is uh, a phrase used in higher education so much, right? Because I don't have that right, quote unquote, fit. Um, I am now at a job that I'm working 40 hours a week and I'm like rent is half or three fourths of my income. And I can give you a story now. I work 
You know, I, the money that I get in, half of my money goes to rent. You know, I live in a situation where, you know, I need assistance or this or that. And I have friends who live in other situations that are similar. You know, and it's not because we do not work. It's not because, um, you know, we are not trying, but we are, you know, our, our talents or our strengths or our skills are not being paid to a way that we can properly sustain ourselves. Right? And so systems like that are needed. What the solution to, to and this is the solution that right-wing people have, is this kind of um, idea of if you give somebody a little bit of, of welfare and they're just, they're just surviving, right? Um, once they get a little bit more, you know, once they get slightly above a certain line, then they won't need it anymore, right? So say, for instance, um, the cutoff for SNAP, which I don't know what it is, is like 15000 a year, right? So say I start making $1,000 more a year, I'm making sixteen now, right? Uh, before taxes, let's not forget, before taxes, I'm making that. My rent still may go up because I may not, I'm probably not in rent stabilization, which I'm, I'm not, but rent is still going up. Food prices are still going to go up. Um, my bills, my electricity and gas may still go up because they'll charge you more per whatever you use because it's per kilowatt or something. I'm not going to lie. I read my bill every month and I'm still like, what are you doing? Um, but because all these other things are going up, that thousand dollars is getting eaten, right? And they may adjust, they may make adjustments, but they may not. Um, but the problem isn't, you know, oh, well, you're now making more, now you don't need this because I do still need it, right? I do still need this service and other services related to it. But the problem is that now I won't be getting that and now I'm gonna just slip back. So now all, now all measures are compounded because the one area that was sort of taken care of because in case you forget, the S and SNAP is supplemental. Now I'm spending 100, 200 more in this one area. I'm only making $1,000 more before taxes and all my other things are going up. Like my rent may go up 50 to $100 a month or my, my electricity or my gas or whatever may go up more. Not to mention health you know, health things and, and, you know, what does your insurance cover? What does your insurance not cover? My health insurance wouldn't even give me a card. They gave me a digital printout. They said, print this out and bring it where you need to go. What? Like they wouldn't, I, I don't even have a physical card for my insurance. I literally have to take a screenshot on my phone and I have to show it to like a pharmacist or a doctor. There's no front and back. It's just like, literally that's the front. Here you go. What? Um, and the one place I can get my medicine at a, a rate that I can afford is like no one near my house. It's like 40 minutes by bus. And, you know, they, I have to, of course, conform to theirs because they're a pharmacy. And then there you go. And that's what I can get. And that's what I can do. You know, and if I didn't even, what if I couldn't get to that place? Because there's some people who live very, very far from my school. What if I couldn't get there? What if it was just not feasible because of how far I live and the fact that I have to work not just on campus, right, to get, you know, the tuition, some of my tuition waived, not all of it. I also have to work off campus. So now I'm getting medication that may be affordable, but I can't get to versus one I can get to but cannot afford. You know, so I think that, you know, these the things is the thing that is not being addressed in a lot of right wing arguments is the underlying system. And it is this particular blame on individuals rather than looking at the systems that are not only creating poverty but sustaining poverty and creating um generational poverty right so you can have gone to college there's some people who are poor who are not first generation i think there's an idea that if you're first gen your family was poor which is not true all the time or if you're um or now if you're now um you know your second or third or fourth gen that your family has money which is also not true um, I know people who are going to college and their parents went to college and their parents still don't make a lot of money, right? Because of those other institutional restraints and discrimination that is hard to prove because of the way, the way a law is written and the way a law works are two very different things. So those two things are not lining up for people. And so there you go. So there's this kind of idea that, oh, you know, once we give people these basic things, they're fine. And it's like, no, because you're not solving the underlying issue. You know, you're not solving the underlying issue of I work for a corporation that pays me so little that I'm on welfare and you're here, one, shaming people on welfare, saying that they're lazy and or, right, not making sure that I'm being paid an equitable wage for my labor. So, you know, 
what the what do you want people to do so I think that that's one of the things I wanted to address that I was kind of on the fence about but I was like nope I have to talk about this so I did um and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one